All right, everyone. So today we're going to talk about the equation of state, which will go to ideal gas law. And I also will talk about uh, correcting the ideal gas law by using the compressibility factor. Okay. Um, the, before we, we get going, I am a little bit worried about this topic. The reason is this. Um, in the past four or five or maybe six, seven uh, segments, um, you know, the goal was this. I was giving you in the examples, for instance, the pressure and you were able, you were calculating your own specific volume and then you were trying to find the T, right? And I gave you different conditions. So sometimes I gave you T, and this maybe, you were finding P. Sometimes I gave you P and T and you were calculating this. Now the question is this. Going through these uh, tables, well, it's cool, it's nice, but is there a shortcut? And Yes, there is a shortcut, but the shortcut, sometimes what happens is students use it extremely generously, right? So I'll give you an example from last semester. I've seen a student using ideal gas law for water at 4 degrees C, 1 atm, okay? Obviously, that's a liquid. You cannot use ideal gas law on that condition, so be very careful, okay? So it seems like, uh, you know, this is not like I have introduced you to tables or this ideal gas law. Very, very important. I see many mistakes. That's why I'm a bit, a bit cautious about this topic, okay? That's a great equation that will help us bypass some of the difficulties that we encounter with tables or maybe we don't even have a table, right? Um, okay, so I wanna write this in here. For gas or vapor only, okay? Very, very important, okay? So, if we focus ourselves to the vapor state, then we can find an algebraic, a very simple relationship between the pressure, the temperature, and the specific um, volume. And this equation, this, this relationship is called the equation of state, okay? That's what the name is. So, okay, let me write that particular equation of state. So, it, it reads like this, PV is equal to MRT. R is called the gas constant, but this is not the universal get gas constant. I'll go back to it, okay? So this is not the same value for all of the uh, gases, okay? So this varies according to which gas you're using, okay? Um, and this is tabulated. Actually, what you have to do is if you want go, to go to it, you go to Appendix 1 um, for SI and you go to actually the very first table, A1, lists all your R values, okay? R values are listed there. And if you are using Appendix uh, 2, this is 1, a1e, kind of confusing, a1e in appendix 2, then you're going to get your R value, but this will be in SI, this will be in British Gravitation or English or USCS uh, units, okay? So that's how I will obtain. And I will actually give you a couple examples for R that we use day to day. Let's take the air. Um, air, we most likely will use the ideal gas law that we are doing now, plus we're probably going to correct it by using the compressibility factor but we will most likely gonna use this type of formula for air, okay? So that is the information to you. So this is what it is. So kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. I, wanna, I want you to be careful about the, the temperature. What is it? Kelvin, it's not Celsius. I'm now using thermodynamic temperature scale. 0.6855 BTU per pound mass times Rankine, okay? Um, or I can, you know, like uh, equivalently in the uh, British gravitational, we also have this. So 4 psi times feet cube, which is converted to BTU, pound mass times Rankine as well. Okay, and you can see, let's take, uh, let's take, take this one as an example. So you can see pressure, you know, I'm looking at this equation for in terms of the uh, dimensional homogeneity, and the pressure will be in psi, right? The volume will be in feet cube, the, the, the right hand side of the mass will be in pound mass, and you can see what the unit should be for R, you know, which I don't know, and the T will be in Rankine, right? Be careful, R is, uh, this is uh, Rankine. So you can see what this should be, right? So you can see here where it's coming from, okay? So this is the unit uh, for that. This is for air, the rest you should refer to Appendix 1A1 or Appendix 2A1E. Now, let's look at this, um, you know, in, in, in thermodynamics, we typically use something called the uh, specific volume, right? So let, let's take a look at this. Can I move this M to this side of the equation? Oh yeah, why not? 
volume divided by mass will be equal to RT. Right off the bat, you see that this P times the specific volume becomes RT. So this is actually the most common version that we use. And sometimes we put this uh, specific volume down here and we have P is equal to because sometimes we are interested in the pressure. Okay, this is the version. So now I want to connect this to the, the version that has the universal gas constant. Okay, what, what is, you know, one thing interesting to note is this R that we, I'm working up there. Uh, when I multiply the, this by molar mass, this is molar mass. And in terms of the units, it's either gram per mole or gram, um, kilogram per kilomole. We typically use kilomole version. So, um, and this, the multiplication of this is called the universal gas constant. Okay, and it is important. This is 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 the same for all gases. Okay, it's kind of uh, very interesting, right? It's called the universal. That's why there's a uh, U there, gas constant. Okay. Oh, by the way, this molar mass uh, information is also given in A1 and A1e. So you can access it from the same table where you are obtaining your, uh, you know, not universal, but uh, ideal gas constant, okay? Um, and I will write over here for our uh, benefit what RU is. So RU will be constant for every single gas. PSIA, feet cube, divided by pound mole times Rankine, right? Or this is also, we can write this as 1.986 ETU pound mole times Rankine. If I'm using SI, then this can be 8.314 kilopascal times meter cube divided by kilo mole times Kelvin, right? By the way, Pascal times meter cube, what is Pascal times meter cube? Let's write, write it in here. Newton per meter squared is Pascal, right? Times meter cube. So you can see Newton meters. That is unit joules, right? So you can write this as, if you choose to, kilojoules, you know, per, per kilo mole Kelvin as well, okay? Okay, now let's make the relationship to the ideal gas law. And I also want to write this, you know, this is from chemistry, you kind of know this. This molar mass multiplied by the mole number will give me the mass of what I'm working with. Okay, okay when I go ahead and uh, write my ideal gas law, uh, you know, one version, not the only version, is P times the molar specific volume is equal to RU, which is a constant for every single gas, times the temperature. And this uh, over here, you can see that this will be. Uh, basically this times m, right? This is molar specific volume. And you can see the unit of it in SI, for instance, is meter cube per kilogram. This is kilogram per kilo mole, right? So I get myself meter cube, you know, for this unit, meter cube per kilo mole, right? In SI, in British gravitational, it's going to be, I'm not going to do the same thing, but it's going to be feet cube per kilomole as well, okay? Typically, I don't use this, okay? Just as an information to you. This is the most common version that we will be using throughout this course, okay? Okay, let me stop here and make another video for the compressibility factor, which we, is very important because we are going to use this uh, often, okay? All right, I'll be back. Thank you.